Hello, so I wanted to show off some cool JavaScript uh, syntax snippets that I've run into whilst creating my programming language Marble uh, in JavaScript. So this file here is called preproc, uh, stands for preprocessor, uh, because my programming language needs to preprocess a test.marble file, uh, for example, this. So things like removing uh, comments here, uh, I only support this kind of comment currently, uh, getting rid of maybe these new lines, so like trimming and stuff like that. Uh, there are a lot of things that you might want to do with a preprocessor. So um, let's implement one. So how is the traditional C-sharp-ish, C-ish, or Java-ish way of uh, implementing something like this? Uh, well, you could define a class and inside that class have a method or function that does this, uh, because really we just want to do an action. We have uh, an input text and we want to perform some pre-processing steps on it and then return uh, that string back. Uh, but because JavaScript is cool and whenever you just uh, import a script, it will try to execute everything in there, uh, except definitions of course only define, they don't execute. Um, so here we're just going to define a uh, function called preproc. Uh, it's going to have a text as an input, so let's say that's a string um, by default, and then we're going to want to return this text at the end. And here's where we want to do some preprocessor steps. Okay, sure. So, so to do one of these steps, you would do text uh, equals text dot, oh, text dot, uh, let's say we want to perform a trim, right? Um, and the reason I'm doing the um, assign syntax is because strings in JavaScript are immutable, so I have to reassign it. I can't just uh, basically this won't uh, change anything. It will perform the action, but it's not going to save it down anywhere. The original text is going to be still the, as it is. The string is going to remain as was. Um, and okay, so let's say we want to do the trim, and we want to do something else. Let's say like uh, we want to replace some kind of value a and replace it with. B or whatever. And uh, and okay, so if we have a bunch of these steps that we want to do, we just copy paste this uh, code here. Um, that's not nice. Uh, that's not at all what I, what I want to do. And, and maybe one of these steps is not just a simple one liner. Maybe one of these steps involves uh, doing a bunch of things. Maybe this entire transformation here is just one step. Uh, so I would like to encapsulate this in perhaps functions uh, that do this for me. So Another neat thing about JavaScript is that functions and a lot of other things in JavaScript are actually objects. And so seeing as this is an object, I can define more objects in it. So I can just define another function in here that's going to be, let's say, trim. Um, and so I can do this. Uh, it's going to also uh, get a text and it's going to return a text. And let's say it performs some action. So it's going to take in text and it's going to return text just like this preprocessor, but this is just like one step. Um, so we could do what we did before uh, because this uses because JavaScript uses closures. This I believe references this text, so uh, it's fine to use the same parameter. But we can uh, and so this will perform the same thing, uh, but uh, we can actually turn this into a one-liner because this only does one step. So we don't need to do multiple steps. We can just return the value of the, of the trim. This is kind of cumbersome, again, uh, because this takes up three lines of code. And if we want to, again, have multiple steps, some of these might have uh, multiple things in them, right? Uh, that gets uh, kind of long, lengthy. Another way that we could write this is actually uh, as a one-liner, as an anonymous function, but give it a name. Grab this. Uh, I can say constant, um, let's say trim capital T. And it is equal to, so this variable is equal to a function, an anonymous function, that is going to return t.trim and it's going to take in a parameter t. And so at this point, I can say trim and I can call this and give it a text. Okay, so that's a one liner. Um, and in here, if you want, you can define more steps as needed, right? So that's kind of cool. Uh, but JavaScript has some nice, neat syntax sugar, which means uh, you can do. Uh, the return value is implied, so whatever, if it's just one instruction, that will be returned. If you have multiple instructions, you are going to have to use the return keyword. Uh, and also, the squiggly brackets can be omitted because that is also implied, uh, since, since it's a one-liner. Another thing is that you can omit these uh, parentheses here because we only have one parameter. If you had multiple parameters, uh, you would do you would have to use parentheses, but here we can omit that. And so we have a nice, neat, uh, short little piece of syntax, which I think looks Pretty beautiful. But then here, uh, we have two lines of code to achieve one thing. Uh, we have the definition of the function, and then we have uh, the actual calling of the function. 
Uh, another way that you could shorten this down is by making the anonymous function inline. Uh, so actually, instead of instead of saying that, you, you could do uh, defining the anonymous function here in line, but this is not actually going to call it. This is going to say text is equal to this anonymous function. Uh, so what we want to actually do here is in line call the function. So we'd, you would wrap it in parentheses and then call it and give it the parameter of the text. And so it would return whatever this function returns, whatever the execution of this function returns, and it returns a string that is trimmed. Um, this makes sense because just like you would do in arithmetic, you could do a plus b and then minus c, you can explicitly say uh, which parts of your code do what, you know, you can segment things off. And the same thing you're doing here is you're saying this is an expression and then I want to call this expression because the expression happens to be a function. Right, okay, but then we're kind of back to where we were. Uh, you would just do a bunch of these lines here and if some kind of step happened to be multiple lines of code, you would do this and then, uh, you know, return the t at the end. Um, okay, that's kind of better. But again, you see that we have some repetition here. Uh, we can do better. Uh, whenever we have repetition, we can use some kind of loop, right? But how can you apply these functions uh, in loop? You have to know what they're called, right? Okay, so we go back uh, to this example where we've uh, defined an anonymous function with a name uh, and we have it by name now. now. Let's say we have another function, just for example here. So I have two functions, doesn't matter what they do right now. Let's say those are my two steps. So whenever we do looping, we would want to do looping over some kind of array, most likely. So what we can do in JavaScript is define our steps as being an array so that we have something to loop through. And then in this array, because functions are again just objects um, and arrays are objects, then we can construct this array out of um, any kind of elements. So we can put our functions in here and trim two. Uh, and it doesn't matter what kind of elements we have here, we could have also just strings. So JavaScript is not typed, it's uh, loosely typed, so it doesn't really have an opinion about this, it doesn't care. Uh, if you try to do something with this array and then you run into things that can't happen because you can't call uh, you know, a string as a function, then you will get that at, uh, error at runtime. Uh, that's up to you to figure out, and if you don't like that, you can use TypeScript so that you can always be safe about what's happening. Uh, but let's say now we have this, these two steps here defined, uh, and as a matter of fact, we don't actually have to define them out here. We could define these anonymous functions here in line. And so then we could say that text here is equal to steps, let's say the zero is one, and then the first one. And of course we would have to call them. And we would call them with the text parameter. So now, uh, seeing as this is a number that can just increment, uh, we can just define in traditional C and Java syntax a simple for loop um, that i equals zero, i less than steps on length, and i plus plus, so just loop through all of them. Um, and we can put this a little bit in here and use i instead, and we've generalized that. Now that's kind of neat. Um, but again, this is three lines of code and you also have to define the steps up here and you have to define uh, these the steps themselves by name or in line in here. Uh, it looks not so pretty when they're in line, uh, so you would most likely want to define them out here. Uh, but why define them inside the function? Well, uh, because closures and at least these names won't and at least these names won't conflict with something that's uh, globally defined, but uh, I know for a fact in this script I don't have anything called trim and trim2, so I can define them out here. So that makes our syntax, uh, that makes our function here a little bit smaller. Uh, but this is again three lines of code, and okay, sure, uh, you could do this. Uh, this is a special case that we only have one instruction. Uh, that means we can omit the curly braces, same for ifs and elses and some other things. Uh, which is nice and neat, but this is still two lines of code. And essentially what we're doing is we're looping over an array, which kind of sounds like something you could do very nice and neatly with functional programming. Luckily for us, JavaScript is functional paradigm friendly. So seeing as this is an array, an array is an object, and uh, this object has some array specific functions, we could try to use those. One of those functions is called 
uh, for each, and which basically emulates a for loop where you have uh, the current running element, t, and it's going to run to the end of the array always. Um, and again, here, this just takes in a this just takes in a callback function, which can again be an anonymous function, or you could define it somewhere uh, outside, like we did here, as a constant, or uh, as here with the function keyword. It'll accept all of those. Uh, but here, for the sake of brevity and nice syntax sugar, uh, we're going to define this function here uh, inline as an anonymous function. It's going to receive the parameter t. Uh, sorry, that's actually f because it's a step of functions. Um, and then we're going to set text equal to this function being applied to text. Uh, and again, we can shorten this down by getting rid of the parentheses, uh, the square, the squiggly brackets rather. And we have ourselves an inline function here. And we could define this outside somewhere else as well, but um, inline is fine. But now this is still a bit uh, cumbersome because now we have to define the steps. We do the for each and then we return the text. This is three lines of code. We can do better than that. This is JavaScript. Functional programming also has another cool paradigm uh, called a reduction function or a flattener or a reducer. In JavaScript, it's simply called uh, reduce. It's essentially a mechanism uh, or function that has an accumulator and actions to perform on that accumulator. So traditionally, you would use this for summing up a bunch of elements. If those elements, for example, were integers, you would sum them all up. Uh, and the accumulator would be the running sum. Here, we want our accumulator to be uh, the text. So we want to accumulate the result of all these mutations of text. Um, and so since we're using two uh, arguments here, this is actually going to need um, the parentheses. Here we can see it takes in a, a previous value, which is going to be our text, and then the current value, which is uh, going to be our function, because we're stepping through this array one by one. So this is going to be our function, this is going to be our text. And then we want to say, here, uh, we want to return f applied to text. Um, rather, let's call this t. Whatever this function returns, if you look at the definition of reduce, is going to be accumulated to t. So as t is being fed from one function to the other, it's accumulating. Um, but seeing as the first element here actually is another function, you can't accumulate to a function. So what I can do here is I can add text uh, as our first value. Uh, if you look at the definition of reduce again, you can see that it can return a string, which is pretty cool. Uh, for each doesn't return anything. It ret um, if we take a look at for each, whoop. If we take a look at for each, uh, it returns void. So we couldn't do something like this uh, because it would return void and our text would essentially be lost. But if we use reduce, it has a nice um, return value of string. So that means we can collapse those two lines down to just a single line. But then we see, okay, why should this constant steps be defined up here inside the function? Uh, well, okay, we can define it out here. But that's still taking up space there. Uh, let's say I want this preprocessor to be dynamic. Let's say I want to add a trim uh, three in the future, which doesn't exist yet, but let's say in the future it does. So in addition to passing in the text, I would also like to pass in the necessary steps that I want this preprocessor to take. How can we do that? Well, we can just say that we want steps to be passed in. And whatever the step happens to be, as long as it's an array, it's going to have the function reduce, which means we can do all of this on it. And here steps uh, would be equal to, let's, let's call it s. Uh, we can set it a default value of s, but why define it out there? If we can uh, set, it, set our parameters to literals here, why not just set it to a literal array here? But now, as you can see, I'm trying to insert text here, but it's not going to be able to grab it out of the parameters list here just yet because text doesn't theoretically exist at this point. So I can't really do this, but I still need, but I still need that text to be inserted at the beginning of the array. Uh, an interesting way that you could do this is steps dot unshift, which will insert whatever element, whatever argument here, as the first uh, as the zeroth index in the array. Uh, but that's again two lines of code. This is JavaScript. And we can do better. If you take another look at the reduce, it actually has an overload that takes in a uh, initial value. So we can say here that t at the beginning is going to equal our text. And so thus we have a one-liner and we've arrived at this super neat little, basically a uh, one-liner. If you uh, do this and it reads beautifully because what we're saying here 
is I want to take in a text, I want to receive in a string and steps to perform on that string. And I will perform these steps, these functions on the string one by one in this exact order. So if I change the order here, they're going to happen in the other order. And I want to simply return whatever is the outcome, the result of applying all of these steps, which I think is just super neat syntax that you can do. Uh, and actually I've implemented this. And so this is exactly what I've done here in the marble programming language. Uh, the preprocess function simply takes in text and a bunch of steps that you might want to do with it. And I have removed comments, collapse, new lines, and, and strip in this order. And I have some other ones uh, that I've defined up here as just regular functions because I want to export them. You can also uh, export uh, const, uh, you know, whatever we had, trim or whatever. Um, but I thought this, this makes more sense to define it as a function here. Uh, they all just take in text and do some kind of action on it. And these particular actions happen to re return string as well. So I can just return the string. So all of these are one liners here, but I could uh, give them more lines of code if uh, necessary in the future. And, yeah, and this is extendable. And so I can add stuff here, but also because of this is, uh, because this is a parameter to the function, that means whatever other script is calling this can say preprocess, we can call this, give it a text of, I don't know, something. And then I can specify the steps here as an array. And I can say instead, you know what, do strip first and then remove comments. And I can build up our, uh, the steps I want this preprocessor to take uh, in the exact order. Um, and I can actually also supply in here in line. Uh, inline functions, uh, anonymous functions as well in here if I want. So this is super customizable, generalized and expandable. Uh, and I think it just reads absolutely beautifully. You might think, okay, well, sure, that's cool, but like it took you 50 s steps and however long this video is, uh, I'm out of time to explain it to get to the syntax. But the truth of the matter is you really get used to this. This, this is my first implementation of how I wrote so I hope you enjoyed watching this. I enjoyed making this and I enjoyed making marble and discovering the syntax for myself.